Welcome back, everybody, to the Nerdcore Podcast, a podcast that reviews the movies and talks that nerd stuff. And as always, it is the nerd you're going to hear to host the show alongside my wonderful co-host, Young Yoda. What's up, what's up, everybody? We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Friday. Thursday? Thursday. It's Thursday. Thursday. Sorry. Thursday. It's my Early Friday. and live for our patrons over at patreon.com slash the nerdcore. At the one dollar tier and above, you get access to this episode early and live just for your eyes and the ears. This is also our second review in our Pride Month, as we added some extra reviews here, and we're gonna be celebrating some LGBTQ plus films. And today we're looking at none other than Claire Denise Bo Travia. Uh, Travia. Travia, Travia, yeah. Travia. Yeah. Brad, uh, how are you doing today, bro? Doing all right. Doing all right. Went to work. Went to a meeting. Had two burritos for dinner. Nine day nap. Oh, crap, man. They're bean and cheese burritos. Not like okay. not like like carne asada or like oh, big. So like meaty. the ones you get at the gas station. Well, cut well, we went to went to Filiberto's, but yeah, you know, better than the gas station. Better than the gas station. But still it makes makes me need to take a nap. So <laughs> Yeah, I know. I feel. I feel you, man. I feel you. Um, I had some water burger today. Mm, water burger. Yeah, what's grand time, bro? Grand time. Uh, I had a water burger today, but um, yeah, I just I went to work and we did some stuff at work, and I was able to film my my taste of cherry review that I was able mm. to what's it called get edited today. Is that so, still a ten out of ten? Always, man. Always perfect in every way. Perfect in every way. Do you know what we say to Roger Ebert? You're so wrong, man. <laughs> so so wrong. Just, that movie's just. I don't know how he how he fucked that one up so bad. Yeah. No, I'm not supposed to speak ill of the dead, but Roger Ebert fucked that one up really bad. Yeah. If I could say you were wrong on one review, man, you were wrong about about Taste of Cherry. So wrong. Yeah. Great movie. Um, some great what's it called it plays well on the tv and everything but i'm gonna I have a video coming up about that tomorrow my personal channel but yeah it's still perfect man still perfect and uh yeah that mr body man really had those first people kind of well he had the first first people like the ones who didn't even get in the car wanting to beat his ass yeah like we're not like that yeah but the one who got in the car the soldier was the one who was scared out of his mind i, I would be too like where are you taking me and then t- uh, dig a hole. I was like, "What?" No, and he's just like saying, "Like you're about to make money, more money than you've ever made in your like career." And it's like, "What the um, hell do you want me to do?" Like, yeah, that's questionable when anybody tells you that. Like, um, yeah, no. no. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 I'm it's like when Dave Chappelle was told he they were gonna pay him what fifty million? Was it fifty million? And then he was yeah. like, "Nah." <laughs> no. But um, yeah. <clears throat> that i was able to edit that right now but um yeah nothing else else going on today man just so busy and so tired i need a, i need a bathe no maya after after i'm done here it's because i need to clean up my uh my bathroom but she needs to get a bath first because yeah i gotta clean up some of my house because i have people yeah. coming over yeah we got people coming over yeah and uh yeah we just oh so busy right Brad? so busy yeah, all the time never all ending the time. It's never ending, bro. It is never ending. But um, what is also never ending is just these reviews, man. Um, nope. I did actually finally, what's it called? I counted it up, Brad. Like how much reviews we've done here. Like, wow, it's so many movies, Brad. I went through all our Patreon feed mm-hmm. to look at which ones, which were the, the mini pods we did. So that way I could add those to a separate list on Letterboxd. And I was like, damn, bro. We talk about a lot of movies. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not counting the stuff that I talked about on like the Nerdy Chicano show and stuff like that, you know? Like we talk a lot about a lot of movies, right? Yeah, we've talked about a lot of movies. Yeah. It's but still of... not Top Gun. <laughs> no, no. And yet, like, you know, this is a great thing about making a podcast about movies. You're never going to finish it. No. Because like they've been making movies since like the nineteen hundreds. Well, and you think about it, how many movies come out in a year? Crap ton. Yeah. So 
you, you'll never do it. So, like, even if I could say, like, it's a lot of movies, in hindsight, like, in retrospect of, like, everything in the history of cinema, we barely even tarred it to touch the, yeah, I mean, touch the surface. Like, hmm. We never even touched, a, like, scratch the surface of Hitchcock. Yeah, we haven't even, like, we've done, like, what, maybe, like, one? Two or three? Well, we did Vertigo. Yeah, we did no, Vertigo. I think that's it. We've only you didn't done... do, like, Rear Window or anything? No, no, we haven't done those. I mean, I've watched those, but yeah, we haven't even done Hitchcock. Yeah, like, there's so many he, people out there that we haven't done anything with. How many movies does Hitchcock have? Like two hundred or something? Like sixty, hmm. I think. Like, yeah, sixty. Shit, it's a lot of movies, right? I thought I thought you had more though. Yeah, it's a lot. There's a lot that was like that's lost to people around the silent era. Yeah, yeah, but um. Yeah, man, we've we talked a lot, a lot of, about a lot of movies, and today we're gonna add another one because we're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, Claire Denise, Both Travia, and uh, of course, if you have not watched Both Travia, then you want to get out of here if you care about spoilers. But if you don't care about spoilers or you've already seen the film, you can go ahead and stay. Either way, how any of that goes, this is your one and only spoiler warning, and it is in effect in a five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> All right, man. I've got a paragraph to read. I know, like two what? sentences, Brad. If that. Yeah. Botravia, <coughs> French, it's pronounced, I mean, Botravia, which is French for good work, is a 1999 French film directed by Claire Denis that is loosely based on Herman Melville's 1888 novella, Billy Bud. Billy the story Bud. set in Djibouti. Djibouti. Where, Djibouti, where the pr- protagonists are soldiers in the French Foreign Legion. Parts of the soundtrack of the movie are from Benjamin Britten's 1951, ar- ar- 1951 opera based on the novella. Hmm. Very yeah. cool. Uh, what is the French uh, Foreign Legion, you might ask, you It's a core of the, of the French army that consists of several specialties, infantry, cavalry, engineers, airborne troops. It was created in 1831 to allow foreign nationals into the French army. It formed uh, part of the Arme d'Afrique, the Arme d'Afrique, the French Army's units associated in French colonials, France's colonial project in Africa until the end of the Algerian War in 1962. Bless you. Thank you, sir. Ah, thank you. And then as we head over to Wikipedia, because that's just not enough, the, um, the synopsis of Boltravial is... An ex-foreign legion officer recalls his once glorious life of leading troops in Djibouti. Is there any trivia on this? Yes, there are some trivia, trivia here. The dance scene was shot in a single take. Wow, no shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michel Souba previously played Bruno Frostier 37 years earlier in Godard's The Little Soldier. Or oh, Little that's Geeks interesting. Soldat. This was the film that inspired Greta Gerwig to be a director. Hmm. Um, and um, actually, ranked, I can kind of see that. Yeah, ranked number forty-three non-English speaking film in the critics poll conducted by the BBC in nine, in twenty eighteen. Hmm. Of course, uh, this film is in the Criterion Collection in spine number one thousand forty-two. And um, Bol Travia ranks number seven in the twenty twenty-two. Sight and Sound Survey of the Greatest Films of All Time. It ranked number 79 in the 2012 poll. That's it. That's all we got here. But, uh, yeah. I wish I had more to read about this. But, no. I don't have more to read about this. But, um, yeah. That's that's it for reading, y'all. But, uh, Brad. Uh, fuck read. Fuck, Brad, what are your initial thoughts on Bo I I did not know what to expect going into this movie. All I know is Raul picked it. Me too. So I had like, I had no idea of going into this what it was about. Um, this is one of the most beautifully shot films I think we've reviewed on this, just from a landscape perspective. Like those wide shots of the desert, then yeah. you have the water shots, and then just it's a very pretty film. I'm guessing they um, did they have to do anything to this film, Criterion? They yes, they gave it a Restored. nice, beautiful restoration, 4K digital yeah. restoration. Well, they did a did a great job in that retrospect. Yeah. Um, 
this was this looked rough before Brad. It was oh, okay. It was, pretty, it was pretty rough. Oh wow. Um, honestly, the the story told a lot without um without a lot of dialogue. Like, there's just scenes of them like exercising or moving and all that dancing and it's a lot of still shots on these guys and you know you can feel tension between the characters like the leader and the one character that you know we know what ends up happening at the end there um and it's all done not through dialogue but just the body tension and that's what this film really focuses on is you know physical attention to how these guys are actually portraying themselves. Yeah. Uh, I believe this is the same cinematographer of um, of, Vard- of Anya Var- Anya's Varda's uh, films, Brad. Um, I might hmm. be wrong there, but I think she, uh, Anya's uh, Godard did some of these films. But um, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to look here, but no, I don't think so. Never mind. Uh, he's done uh, Vin Vender's movies. He did uh, Paris, Texas, and he did um, hmm. did some other ones. But yeah, I agree with you, Brad. This beautiful, this movie's beautiful to look yeah, how at. How do you how do you make clothes hanging on a line look good? <laughs> no, well, yeah, fuck it, I know. <laughs> fuck it, I know, right? Uh, <coughs> dude, I mean, even just the stuff with like the bodies, right? Like as they're like the ones where like they're like hugging each other, right? Or like even when they're like I don't know if there's like a fighting form, like they're they're like yeah. grappling. I guess grappling. Yeah. And it doesn't then look like, like they're hugging them. I don't know. Or when they're doing their exercise outside and they're like laying down like that, and it's like, what the hell? Like salutations to the sun. Salutations to the sun, man. Yeah. It was like, dude, like you these these very like simple things are just beautifully like um framed mm-hmm. and just he there's just i don't know like it's a beautifully no shot explain. film that's for sure yeah it's so natural right it's just huh. and even then like like you said the body language is what's what's you know moving along most of this story you know it's it's not even like because other than our main characters like inner monologue that's all we're kind of getting because all the other stuff coming from like the soldiers is not as important spoken as it is how they act with each other and their like body language with each other. Yeah. I mean, there's a few scenes where like they're at the table and they're like, that guy doesn't like you be careful, but it's like those short little dialogue sentences that kind of add a little bit, but you could just tell they're all that table and you know, they're not feeling it. Like they're all like tensed up. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, like, the the main the main actor I can't remember his name I'm looking here uh I know his he, character was Gallup. Gallup yeah Gallup Gallup yeah Gallup um and just oh man how you just see him and you're like you know it from like the beginning bro this guy is holding a lot of things in and you got um, a short man complex it happens with the French uh, <laughs> he's like holding oh, so much oh in. shit all the French are gonna be after me now god damn it yeah bro. <laughs> <clears throat> Like he's holding. I don't know about wine thing, either. Man. And he's like, he's holding all that, and he's just taking it out on this guy who, yeah, sometimes this guy does kind of act like a dick. He does, yeah. but you have to look at it like this guy really like the people who are coming in are usually like you know refugees and stuff, right? They're like, this is literally the branch of the army that allowed like nationals to come in, mm-hmm. so they're usually not coming in from the best of areas. And like, like you saw that one dude, like he was from like Russia, and he goes like, dude, I. I joined the army because there's no money in Russia. Like, yeah. I'm, I literally had to leave because there's no food, there's no money. And it's like... Yeah, he didn't agree with the... I, I like the little line, though. He didn't agree with the culture, and the, the dude shoots back, what culture? It's like, <laughs> ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this movie also has <clears throat> a lot to say about, like, masculinity, you know, and about the, the way that we... You know, like, all of these men, like, just hold all of these feelings in. And mm-hmm. it's like, and when when we of course like we don't really see like how they release it like in the way that we see like Galoop at the end when he's dancing to the rhythm of the night right and he's like at first he's like trying to do it but like he finally lets go he finally like allows himself to like feel and and like forgive himself for being such an ass. Well, um, I don't know. I think that might have a double context because right before that. Um, 
we see him make his bed as a soldier would do lay yeah. down with a gun in his hand and um i forget what he recites but the there's there's a quote it basically says uh once the job's done you can die and i feel like that dancing was him um oh like shit. you said letting go but in a different form oh okay that's interesting that's an interesting what's it called a uh, analysis of that yeah yeah but so, yeah. so i don't know if he let it technically let it go but he he, he performed in one way, um, but I got to say, with the masculinity part, this man found it easier instead of talking to this dude and being like what issues he had, breaking this dude's compass and letting him out yeah. into the salt fucking seas to yeah, which, die. <laughs> that's one of my favorite shots uh, where <coughs> he's laying down and the salt flats are like covering his yeah, head already. And you, and the, you have the mountains and you have the that group the coming up. Yeah. yeah, and the backpack is like right next to his face, so he doesn't get like the sun directly there. And it's just like, oh, one of my favorite shots. But yeah, man, like this guy like refuses to speak to him, and instead, like he just decides to teach him a lesson by like what's it called of sending him out there. And honestly, man, like I I think that Galoop just did that because he refuses to what's it called understand like he refuses to admit that. I think Galoop just had feelings for him. Yeah, like, he was he was he was in love with him. Yeah. And uh well he'd he'd been what they say he was the perfect legionnaire. Yeah. Or something to that effect. Yeah, he was the perfect legionnaire and he's like he's he's like constantly like admiring him, but he also has to like intervene there and be like, but no, he's like he does this wrong and like he does this like it's like I think that Galoop just refuses to believe in like the fact that like hey I think you might like this guy. Like, this well, also, was... uh, it feels like Galoop didn't have a lot of um, success with the ladies either. No, because like that one girl, like that he's like says like, like is his girlfriend. He doesn't really care about. Her. No, <laughs> no. Probably, probably just a house to sleep in or some shit like that. Because he's gone most of the time, probably. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Well, I mean, like, and that's also another great part that like this movie does. It like I'm telling you that Claire Denis' script is just fantastic, like that. Is that like it's also a big conversation on like the French's uh, colonialism in, in in Africa? Yeah. Like, oh, and then and then also religion aspects on yeah. who was in there, and just I felt bad because it, they're like it's Ramadan and like three dudes just sitting onto the side not eating. It's like Fuck. y'all suck. <laughs> Fuck, bro. Y'all fucking suck. You guys eating fucking suck. Yeah, it's like you know, those guys are hungry, bro. But um. Yes, I I love I love this film, man. It was a great movie. Um, there's just you know, like I said, these are like some of those movies where it's like you don't have to really say much, but the way that you look at like the body and the way that the body moves and the language going for that body, I mean, you're gonna it's, say it's, more. It's something different. You don't usually get a lot of that. Yeah, you don't get a lot of that. Um, I guess bodily acting. I would yeah. say. Well, it's because not everybody's great at it, man. It's yeah. really hard. And, and also because like, it's really hard because when you try to do that, you have to also rely on like the director. You have to rely on the, on the DP and the camera operator for them to like match it. Like, Cause like, you know, how is your story? So how is your, what's it called? Body supposed to say a story when you're, what's it called? A, when you're getting a wide shot instead of a tight one, when you're supposed to have a tight one on there. It's like, yeah. you know, and I think that in this movie, like it was Claire Denis was it was a uh, good uh, Agnes Gordad and everybody who kind of like understood what they had to do. And it was all able to mesh together to kind of present this like movie where the body says more than the words can. I'm trying to think of other movies that kind of are similar to this that we've reviewed. Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Although I, I do think Portrait of a Lady might have done it slightly better. Oh, yeah. Because I yeah. really did like Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I think I gave that one a 10. Pretty sure. I think you did, Brad. Yeah. But um, I mean, because because like in portrait, it's the same thing. It's like you know, you they can't tell each other that they want each other, but like the way that the body just is standing yeah, the way there, they view each other. Yeah, and it's like, like just do it, just kiss already. Get get it, get it on. <laughs> yeah, Brad wishes that that's how in the mood for love would have gone, but yeah. Uh, yeah, just fucking sat there next to each other the whole goddamn time. <laughs> yeah, bro. Hey, man. Some people are just warriors. Man. All right, man. But um, it's Maybelline. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but what is your uh, what is your um, 
your verdict, a final verdict on Claire Denise uh, Voltaria? I'm going to give a solid 9 out of 10. Brad, we're on the same wavelength here, Brad. I'm also giving it a 9 out of 10. Um, not sure if I'll pick this up during the sale, but I am adding it to my uh, to my wish list. I mean, I do want this. Wh- whatever that restoration was, just fucking perfect. Fantastic, man. And Oh, we didn't even talk about the music. Oh, yeah, the music is great. Yeah, the music yeah, yeah. is great. Yeah, I love that they include like all these different like pieces from like all these different eras of like classical music. And, yeah, else? and then you have just dancing techno music up yeah, in the, in the yeah, club. Dancing techno, yeah. And then, like, of course, at the end, the, the is a rhythm of the night. Yeah, and that gets yeah. you hyped. I was like, all right. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, Brad, just new 4K digital restoration supri- supervised by director of photography and approved by director. Okay, yeah, with an uncompressed stereo soundtrack. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, if you guys are going to be looking for this next uh, next month, this will be uh, twenty bucks at the Barnes and Nobles, the fifty percent off. But um, very cool. Yeah, I, I I love this movie, man. This movie's fantastic. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely going to be looking out for this one when uh, when the uh, sale starts. But that concludes our review of Voltavia, and of course, we hope that everybody enjoyed that. We hope that you all are. Um, Following us on Twitter at the Nerdcore underscore. You can also follow us on Instagram at the Nerdcore. You can also check out our website at the Nerdcore.com. And you can also check out our Patreon.com slash the Nerdcore for our, um, you know, early access to videos like the one you're watching right now. You can watch this live before the public gets to watch it on a Saturday. You're going to get to see this for two days, which is pretty cool if you'd ask me. And, um, yeah. So, um Follow us there, and also let's go. I mean, check out the Patreon, and also um, check out our Discord. And the link is in the description. And if you could please, you know, subscribe to the channel on YouTube and leave a like on the video, it would be very much appreciated. Also, uh, click the notification bell. It I can subscribe, you. damn it! I can subscribe, damn it! Yep. And of course, uh, on the audio side of things, leave a five star review. Please, 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 please do that. It all helps with out the, with the algorithm and getting this show out to more eyes. Of yeah, course. YouTube, yeah, YouTube's also changed a few things. Um, yeah. As as uh, Burke put it so elegantly, um, Twitch fell on the ground, and YouTube is putting their foot on its neck. Yeah, yeah, man. I I think at this point, it's becoming a no brainer where you're going now. What's it called? And, and today, Twitch released some really stupid. What's it called? The ways to like to combat it, and it was like, okay. A partner plus program, but like, what does that do for the ninety nine percent of your streamers on your platform? Is, is somebody partners? is that something for them to pay for too? No, it's like it's something above partner. So like, you would get a seventy thirty split on the subs if you're a partner plus, but you have to have like three hundred fifty monthly subs, and like, it's stupid, bro. It's stupid. only for those like the higher ups, like the ninjas oh, and the yeah, you know, it's not like ninja was a, it was a partner either, but you know what I mean by those really yeah. top streamers. No, I think I think uh I think we're gonna have a mass exodus um from Twitch. I think Twitch is done, bro. I think that, uh, that but, was the nail in the coffin. Yeah, but we've been we've been that way for like a couple of years yeah. now. Yeah, we're only there because what's it called? Y'all some of y'all are there and honestly the, the, the more we grew, we realized that a lot of y'all just enjoy YouTube more and y'all yeah. just watch on YouTube. So you know, we'll, we'll have more of an update on that and the future of all that when we get to it, but in the meantime, we want to thank our Patreon supporters. They are the ones who make this possible. Of course, we would like to thank our producer, Shane. Where can they find him, Brad? You can follow our friend Shane at twitch.tv slash XSRK. Yeah, I just did a Twitch, whatever. At Twitter, at thrifted.il, or go buy something from the sup he got at prisoncityvintage.com. Also, you got a new store, so go check it out. Yes, sir. Up in Joylet, New York. New York, no. Joylet, Illinois. So that's go ahead and check that out. That's a bit. That's a bit stretch. Mm. Yeah. But this weekend we've got nothing because Brad has some company over. But on Monday, if you're on the Patreon, you're going to get our review of the Grand Budapest Hotel at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And right after, on the public, we're going to get our review of the Idol Episode 3 for y'all. And we'll go on from there. But in the meantime, I hope everyone's had a wonderful day. And I'm sure next week we will have our review of The Flash because I'm seeing that on Saturday. So good luck to me. Whew, good luck, bro. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a toast happened. in your honor. Thank you, man. 
Without further ado, Brad, let's get them the hell out of here. All right, our old Damien host, as always. Thank you to all our listeners out there, all those who join us in chat. No one today, but that's okay. Thank you to uh, our Patreon supporters, our listeners. We appreciate each and every one of you. And to uh, end this episode, um, I mean... They were just good friends, man. I mean, hugs, not drugs, yo. Young Yoda out. They were just roommates.